Welcome to our beautiful planet Earth. I believe this is South America, but we're not actually going to be looking at Earth today. We're going to go out there into the uh, into our galaxy, into Milky Way, and try to find something really, really important for our galaxy. And that's something that I'm talking about is, of course, Sagittarius A. Now, this video is called In Search of Sagittarius A because we're going to be looking for this really, really massive black hole somewhere in the center of our galaxy that essentially everything in our galaxy orbits around, including, of course, our sun. Our sun actually is currently orbiting around Sagittarius A. Now, Sagittarius A is not a particularly exciting name for this black hole, so actually, at the end of this video, I'm going to try to give it a much better name. And if you have a much cooler name that we can assign to it sometime in the future, do post it in the comments below. Anyway, welcome to What The Math and enjoy the video. <laughs> And to find Sagittarius A, we're only going to be using Space Engine today because I figured it's about time that I just spend time with this really, really awesome simulator that a lot of you have been asking about. Uh, Space Engine, as you may actually know, is absolutely free. And unfortunately, it's only available for Windows. But if you do have Windows or you can emulate Windows on your Mac, uh, you should definitely get this because look at the beauty that it creates. This is a, by far the best space simulator out there. Uh, hands down. I'm sorry, Universe Sandbox 2, you're great, but, you know, nothing beats free, and uh, this is definitely amazing. Anyway, so how are we going to actually look for this amazingly huge, um, massive black hole, especially considering the fact that you can't really see black holes. They're, you know, they're black. That, that's why they're called black holes. They're you, you cannot really see them. You can only see the after effects. And so as I'm actually moving closer to the center of our galaxy, faster and faster so and you can kind of see the stars um swimming swimming by us as i'm approaching the center of our galaxy i'm just going to tell you a little bit more about how this particular black hole was detected and it's actually not um not very tricky as a matter of fact the reason we actually are almost 100 percent sure there is a black hole right at the um, at the point where I'm going is because of another star, a very very large star, about 15 masses of our sun that is actually relatively bright as well, that orbits around this imaginary or invisible point, um, and you can kind of actually see it orbit. We've actually seen it orbit um, around that point, and its orbit only takes it about 15 years. So there's this star somewhere in the middle, and it's actually, it's just called S2. And S2, um, you can actually see the picture here that shows you the orbits, um, all, all of these stars. Um, so the orbit of S2 um, only takes it about um, 15 years. And uh, it's really interesting because it actually moves really, really fast at about 5,000 kilometers per second. And at this speed, it's it's impossible for it to be anything else but a very, very massive black hole that creates this kind of effect. Now, all right, so th that's good. Uh, so I, we know that there's a black hole somewhere here. But unfortunately, because it's, as you can see, it's really, really bright here. It's actually almost impossible for us to detect it. So we can only see it uh, using the um, effects of other stars or basically seeing the orbits of other stars and then trying to estimate where exactly it's located. But anyway, we'll never really find it if we just fly around our galaxy. Uh, we just have to do this a little bit differently. We're going to actually click on this button right here. And uh, this allows us to search for various objects um, within a certain distance. So let's actually look for everything that is a black hole within the radius of about 10 light years from us. So we're going to actually just click on OK here and then click on search and well it looks like there's nothing around us however if i change this to 100 light years if, if we actually increase the search radius we will be able to find look at that at least three different black holes now how do we know if this is the actual black hole we're looking for and the way you can tell is usually by the number of stars orbiting around it so this one seems to be pretty massive so let's see if this is what we're looking for although i'm pretty sure it's not but we're actually just going to go there and check it out so i think this is one of the black holes nearby but it's probably not the one we're looking for 
And by clicking on this button right here, I can actually see that this is not the black hole I'm looking for. As a matter of fact, this is a binary system where there's a brown dwarf and a black hole having a berry center. And this particular black hole is only about uh, 10 times the mass of Sun. So it's actually very, very small in comparison to the Sagittarius A, which is 4.3 million times of our Sun, which is actually much, much, much more massive. So, right, let's try this again then. And having searched again using thousand light radius, I found a few more black holes, but once again, none of these are actually massive enough, uh, enough for us to actually consider them to be Sagittarius A. But you can see there's actually quite a lot of black holes within thousand light years of this particular location. So they're not very uncommon. They're actually pretty common. All right, so well, that's good. Let's actually try to go a little bit more uh, into the middle of the um, of our galaxy and search again, but this time we're going to increase the radius to about 10,000 light years. So I'm actually, to do this even more effectively, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly out of the galaxy just to see where, approximately where the center is. And it's actually somewhere in here. So, and then we're going to just very gently approach the center. And right in this location, as you can see, there's a lot of stars. This is a very highly concentrated area. And we're going to search for it again using the same principle. And we found a lot more black holes near the center, but if you look at the, uh, if you sort them by stars, if you look at this one, this has 23 stars. All right, so that looks really interesting. So let's actually go to this particular black hole. We're going to go to it and see if this is actually what we're looking for. And oh my God, look at the size of that thing. This is already very, very large. Look at the uh, gravitational lensing effect that it even creates. And so this is a pretty massive black hole. If I were actually click on it, you'll notice that it says that um, the mass here is not even listed. As a matter of fact, if I actually click on this object, it says Galaxy Milky Way. And if I were to right click and info it, it says this is the Milky Way. So essentially, this is the center of our galaxy and we were able to easily find it just by going into our approximate location of a center and then looking uh, at all of the black holes within thousand light years of that location. Now there's another one here and it's a pretty massive black hole as well. And there is actually another black hole orbiting around this uh, the central black hole. And that other black hole is actually quite massive as well. It's about 1,300 uh, times the uh, mass of our sun. And it was discovered in 2004 uh, by a, a group of scientists. And what's really interesting about the other black hole that orbits around this central large black hole it, is that it actually shows us or it gives us an idea of how these massive black holes at the center of the galaxies are formed. So what scientists think today is that the other black holes that orbit around it eventually get sucked into it and increase its mass. And uh, this sort of gives you an idea of how all of these galaxies are created. So in the beginning, this might have been a very small black hole, but as it absorbed more and more massive black holes from uh, vicinity, it basically became an ultra massive black hole that it is today. And what's really interesting about the Sagittarius A is that uh, we know that it has an accretion disk. So there's um, an accretion disk that has a distance um, or it basically orbits around the black hole at a distance of very close to the orbit of Neptune in our solar system. So it basically, it's a very, very large, very wide arc. And this uh, accretion disk actually emits radio waves that we can receive um, from Earth. And we actually uh, know that there is something going on here and it's very likely an accretion disk from a black hole because of this radio wave emission that we, uh, we can actually hear on Earth. And what's even cooler is that once in a while we'll even detect some crazy, crazy X-ray emissions, uh, really powerful X-ray emissions from this region. And the only explanation we have for those X-ray emissions, especially the one we actually were able to detect in January of 2015, is that something like an asteroid or a small planetoid probably um, smacked right in the middle or basically approached this um, location uh, and fell into the black hole and then as a result of the collision with the black hole it emitted a very very large amount of energy. And there's quite a lot of these X-ray emissions that have been detected because we, we are actually always looking in this direction. There's actually a, um, a telescope that is always monitoring this black hole, just looking for more stuff to discover and more unusual things to, to see. And actually one of the cooler things that they saw um, relatively recently, starting in 2008, was what you see on the screen right now. They actually were able to see uh, a cloud of gas passing by very close to this location and getting sort of disrupted by it. And there's an 
artist's rendition of what possibly happened, uh, I think people or scientists basically think that it may have been uh, a star that approached uh, the black hole really, really closely and it just got uh, broken up into little pieces uh, because of what's called a Roche limit and also because of the fact that there's a very strong gravitation here. And so as this uh, object approached the black hole, it got broken up into pieces and basically created the cloud that we got to detect. Now, what I wanted to see is actually this. I wanted to accelerate time and uh, just watch these stars that are close to it um, orbit around it. And you'll actually see that they orbit really, really fast. So uh, we're going to accelerate time so that it's, it's possibly something like one month per second. There we go. And you can see how fast they orbit. So... There is our stars, and uh, these are actually don't have the same names as they do in real life. But these are the stars that we can actually see orbiting around this imaginary location um, in real life as well. So there we go. This is a little bit better. This is maybe uh, four months per second. And there we go. And there's actually a lensing effect that you can detect um, in Space Engine. But unfortunately, we cannot see the lensing effect from Earth because, like I mentioned before, uh, there's so many other things in between this black hole and our planet Earth that we just can't really see it very well. It's a little bit difficult to see. Uh, but um, our planet is not, is not actually that far away from it. It's only about 26,000 light years away. And one orbit of our uh, star, uh, our sun, takes um, several hundred million years. Or actually, I believe it's 150 million years around, around there. Uh, whereas these stars, they orbit really fast. Uh, so the fastest one is 15 years. Um, I think the slowest one is maybe about 35 years. Uh, but they all are basically orbiting around this very, very massive black hole. And they're doing it really fast. Now, uh, because it's not really even close to the speed of light, they're obviously not going to experience anything close to what you, we saw in the movie Interstellar. So... Um, Interstellar was a little bit far-fetched. That's the, this has to be a supermassive black hole that also spins really fast to create uh, time dilation effects that we get to see in inter Interstellar. But um, here, the time dilation effects um, would be very, very minor. So even on the fastest star, um, you would only maybe gain a few seconds per, uh, for every few years. In other words, if you were to live on a planet that orbits one of these stars, which, like, let's just say this star right here, and so if you were to live on one of the planets that orbits this star, um, you would possibly gain maybe a few seconds for every few years. And so if you lived here and your twin lived on Earth, you would actually be uh, a few seconds younger every few years than your twin. And that's what we call time dilation. And so as we're orbiting around this black hole, which is somewhere here, there it is. It's right there in the middle. I'm going to try to zoom into it so you can get to see it a little bit better. There we go. Uh, so as we're orbiting around it, you can kind of see that not only is there um, a really interesting motion of other stars that is going on around around it, but you can also see it from, from this distance. You actually get to see a very strong um, effect of the... Uh, gravitational lensing that is created by this, this supermassive object. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is the size of this black hole. The way we measure black holes is usually with something called Schwarzschild uh, radius, which refers to the... Uh, I'm going to come close to it so I can show you. The uh, radius of this right here. So this is what we call event horizon. This is the area where we don't really know what happens after. Like nothing actually leaves event horizon. Even the light cannot escape it. And uh, on this radius right here, this is where escape velocity is uh, basically equal to the speed of light. It's uh, close to 300,000 kilometers per second. And so uh, this radius from the center to here is approximately 12 million kilometers so that's about uh one fourth of the orbit of mercury or about 17 times the radius of our sun so it's not very large but at the same time it is very very massive and um it is obviously a very scary and a very powerful object so there's a lot of energy involved here and there's definitely a lot of things going on that we are not even certain about yet because this is essentially what our entire galaxy orbits around and so, all in all, this is actually a pretty awesome object. I, I mean, it's actually so awesome that I'm really surprised we don't have a better name for it yet. And unfortunately, because this object actually has no cool name yet, I think one of the better names for it would be Kronos. Kronos is, of course, the elder god in Greek mythology who is known for eating his own children. 
and is actually a very famous painting that depicts him eating his own child. And uh, it obviously also uh, means time, it also represents time. And I think it's a pretty good description or a pretty good analogy to what a black hole is. And we're gonna come really, really slowly to it so you get to see how everything changes as we come closer to it. But if you actually have a much better or much cooler sounding name that is relevant to Greek or Roman mythology, because it's actually, it's the astronomical convention. It has to be uh, from one of the mythologies. It can be Norse mythology. It can be um, Slavic mythology. It can be any kind of mythology, but it has to be um, a deity or a god that is basically um, from one of those mythologies. And if you have a really cool name that sort of applies to a black hole, and as we're basically approaching Event Horizon, this is how everything around us will change. Um, but yeah, post it in the comments below, please, and thank you. And obviously, I'm not sure if one day someone will actually name it that, but you never know, because people are watching this channel and maybe they'll like our idea. Anyway, so do post your um, suggestions in the comment box. And as we land on the Event Horizon, you'll actually get to see what uh, you would see if you were to approach a black hole really, really slowly, uh, and then land inside of it. And what happens after is anyone's guess. That's probably one of the mysteries we still haven't been able to resolve even today. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something about the black hole in the center of our galaxy. And as we land on it, you'll notice that we start orbiting really, really fast. I'm actually going to slow down time now because what's happening now is that the black hole is spinning really fast. And because it's spinning, and because it's spinning, you get to see these really, really crazy um, effects on, on the surface of this black hole. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. And like this video if you've enjoyed watching it. And don't forget to share it with someone who you think may want to learn more about astronomy and astrophysics. And once again, thank you for watching. Game you guys later. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, bye-bye.